Unscrew the chain drive sprocket fixing bolt, remove the washers, the spring, the sliding dog and the sprocket. The sleeve can then be removed by means of the appropriate puller. To remove the shaft, tap the splined end with a mallet on the side. Should the crankcase need to be removed from the frame, it is necessary to unscrew these two nuts. Tap the pin out of its seat with a punch. Having finished the dismantling of the engine, here are the parts which go to make it up. Here we see them illustrated. And here as they are. Now, to begin the reassembly. Replace the crankshaft, inserting it through the crankcase, then tapping it lightly and carefully on the flywheel end so that the drive side fits into the bearing. Fit the chain drive sprocket group complete with the sleeve onto the crankshaft, tightening the locking bolt. Replace the flywheel support flange, tapping it with a mallet to ensure it fits perfectly on its seat. Screw in and tighten the three bolts. Now replace the stator plate. If the timing was correct before dismantling, just replace the plate in identically the same position as before. Otherwise, it is necessary to re-time the ignition, as will be explained further on. Screw in the three fixing screws. Connect wires to the flywheel low tension socket in the proper color sequence. Now fit the flywheel rotor to the crankshaft, taking care that it fits properly onto its key. Lock by tightening the left-handed lock nut using flywheel holding tool. Fitting the piston. It is very important that the two ring pegs face the cylinder exhaust ports and therefore the arrow marked on the piston crown should point towards the exhaust side of the cylinder. Insert the gudgeon pin and fit the two circlips. The piston and cylinder are in three standard size gradings, plus, zero and minus, marked according to the grade on the top face of the cylinder and on the piston crown. To have the correct coupling, both cylinder and piston must have the same marking. To insert the piston into the cylinder, use the piston ring clip. Ensure that the gasket has been placed between cylinder and crankcase. At this point, the ignition timing can be carried out if necessary. Check the condition and the gap of the contact points. This gap should be between 0.35 and 0.45 millimeter. If necessary, this can be adjusted through the adjustment screw. Place the TDC dial gauge with its support onto the cylinder in place of the head. Then connect the electric timing tester with one clip to the green HT coil wire and the other to earth. Bring the piston up to its top dead center, adjusting the dial gauge to zero. The timing tester will buzz or light up. Turn the flywheel anti-clockwise until the light goes out or buzzing stops indicating that the points are closed, which should show a reading on the dial gauge of 0.25 or 0.30 millimeters. Should the point closing occur before or after the above reading, then remove the flywheel rotor and adjust the position of the stator plate until the points close at the correct time. We should like to point out that the flywheel rotates in the opposite direction to that on the LD and TV machines. The flywheel dust cover can now be replaced, fixing it by its two screws or by the circlip as the case may be. Replace the flywheel cow. Replace the cylinder head, remembering to place the metallic gasket between this and the cylinder. Fit the cylinder cow, securing it by means of its screws.
Replace the spark plug and HT lead. Replace the carburetor with filter and hose. Replace left hand footboard. Remove the rod between the shock absorber pins and insert the engine rebound buffer. Replace shock absorber. Fit the cursor selector slide onto the lay stub axle shaft. Replace the selector spring and the two balls. Into the shaft and move the cursor selector until it clicks into position. Replace the shaft into its ball bearing. Fit the cone to the shaft, then the hub. And screw on the hub nut without tightening. Replace the wheel and fix by means of its four dome nuts. Assemble the primary shaft and slide on the lay shaft gears in proper sequence. Slide on the needle bearing and replace the gear support flange in perfect alignment in its seat, locking it in position by means of its six nuts. Replace the chain together with its guides without tightening the screws. Replace the washer. The outer clutch bell, the needle bearings and the inner clutch bell. Lock the inner bell by means of the appropriate tool. Tighten the nut fixing it to the primary shaft and tighten the chain guide screws. At this point we carry out the chain alignment check. Unscrew the torque limitator fixing bolt, remove the washer, spring and dog. The aligning check tool to be used carries an ordinary dial gauge with an extension. Now proceed as follows. Bring the dial gauge point in contact with the chain drive sprocket surface and adjust gauge to zero.